day to viewers, the Colonel speaking to you live from the Grange British Imperial YouTube Broadcasting. Don't forget to recall the Xenophone record MR2240, Part 3 and 4 of Lady Audley's Secret, an old time melodrama. Part 3, The Fire at the Inn, or Extreme Measures, based on Dorothy Braddon's famous novel, starring Lydia Sherwood, Ian Swindley, Norman Shelley and Company. And then Part 4, Lady Audley's End, or The Cold, Cold Grave. <laughs> Here we go, viewers. I'll turn over halfway through, as no doubt will the cops. Right. Six months have passed, and no one yet is the face of George Colbert. The secret is here, here, hidden in my own breast forever. Robert Audley is bearing no pains to discover his dear friend. I'm afraid he'll not be successful. I wish I could banish the remembrance of the fatal meeting from my mind, but I cannot. At night, I can fancy he is before me in the solitude of my chamber, when sleep should be sealing my eyelids. But these abject fears and whisperings of conscience shall be hushed. How now, fellow? You have no business here. Be gone. I won't. Then the servants shall make you. Stay. If anyone hears what I'm going to say to you, you're a doomed woman. What do you mean? <laughs> I know what I know. Well, and what is that? Enough to hang him. You want me to go now? What can he know? Speak. Sometimes people see us when we don't see them. Of course, you know the old well in the line fee walk them up here at the bottom of it? You know. Oh, I see thee pushing in. Dead men tell no tales, but live ones may, so if my mouth be not stopped, I may open it. Oh, cursed juggling fate. I have only destroyed one witness to see another rise up before me. I've staggered her. She finds I'm a clincher. We must be friends. Aye, it wouldn't do for us to be enemies. Come, chip up. What money do you expect? hundred pounds will do now. I bring it to your house. I have not so much with me. And when will you bring the money? At dusk. You will not have long to wait. Neither will I, so mind. I must have thy money, or the world shall have thy secret. How can I get rid of that man? Shall a poor, a drunkard, a ruffian hold me in his grasp, ready to crush me when he pleases? This is one of the curses of my position, to be obliged to wait on this drunken animal and endure his brutal taunts and insolent threats. Well, I must find my time. Good evening, my lady. Luke told me you were coming. Where is your husband now? In the bar, drinking with Mr. Robert Audley. Oh, Robert Audley here and in your husband's company? Yes, and talking about some secret matter, I should fancy the way they whisper to each other. Looks a bit dreamy. Send your husband to me. Oh, I don't think you'll be able to make any sense of him. I wish you could call in the morning or leave word with me what you would have No, to this is the only time I have. I want you to walk part of the way home with me. Go on the road and I'll overtake you. But I'm afraid to leave Luke on his own drink. He may set the house on fire. House on fire. A good idea. Go, go, good Phoebe. I will soon overtake you. Whatever can she have to say to Luke? Oh, Robert Audley. Here with the Luke. The fates conspire with me. I have but one terrible agent to aid me, and that is fire. First, lock them in. Now, to set light to this halo. <laughs> burn, burn, and so perish both my enemies. <laughs> Right, on to side two, the last part of this melodrama. Oh, my lady, Michael's been taken suddenly ill. He wishes to see you and Mr. Audley instantly. Can this be true? Who told you? Miss Alicia. She was going to our house to seek Mr. Roberts. Well, lucky she did not. She might have given the alarm a fire and saved him. Let me run and inform him, my lady. No, stay you here. I will go. <gasps> Look, look, my lady, the fire in the direction of our Nonsense, nonsense, it is quite a contrary way. Come, come, to the hall, to the hall. No, I will not. You mean mischief towards me, I'm sure you do. Unhand her, madam. <gasps> Robert Audley, alive. Aye, 
that you'll punish and expose him. You thought to trap me, to silence me, by dooming me to a dreadful death. But heaven be praised I was not sleeping when your wicked hand set fire to the house. No, I live to be the avenger of my friends. What will you do? And who are you that dare accuse me? I have wealth, boundless wealth, and will use it to crush you, to crush you, or rather God. Never! The law shall have its own. And who is to be my accuser? I, Luke Marx. Thank heaven I'm spared to do an act of justice before I end my guilty life. I accuse that woman. Robert! Robert! Oh. Sir Michael is dead. Oh, pity me. Pity me and protect me. Sir Michael is dead. Now vengeance take thy own. Friends, hear me. That woman murdered George Torvald. Who oh, dare accuse me? Uh, I, she pushed him down that well. But George Torvald is here. Here. <gasps> alive. You, alive. <gasps> Back, woman. And thank honest Luke Marx that you have not my death upon your soul. You will be scorned, loathed, and despised by all. The blow you struck me rendered me invidy for months. I have been silent until today because I gave my word to Luke, that poor dying wretch. But now I am free, free to tell all. Speak to her, speak to her, Robert, and say I forgive her. You hear, woman? But I do not see. I had a rich husband. They told me he was dead, but no, they lied. See, see. He stands there, your arm, your arm, Sir Michael. Do not heed what the world says. I have no husband but you, none, none. Her carriage is waiting, come, come. What does she mean, Robert? Mean? Do you not see? She is mad. Hi, hi. <laughs> Mad. That is the word. I feel it here, here. Do not touch her. Let the grave, the cold grave, close over Lady Audley and her secret. about that it sounded like a particularly exciting episode of the archers from the 1950s hope you enjoy it thank you and goodbye <laughs>